and the fascinating ruins of many civilizations. This is the province of Adiyaman. With its secrets leaving immortality behind, hidden behind the archaic world for 2,000 years, the province consists of the greatest mystery, Mount Nemrut, which is in Adiyaman. An open-air museum with its historical, cultural, natural, and touristic sites. Adiyaman is one of the rare settlements starting from the beginning of human journey on Earth and lasting uninterruptedly until this day. Adiyaman, which is in southeast Anatolia, besides having a rich, fertile soil and a mysterious historical identity, is also continuing to modernize and develop. The geography of the province, where the mild Mediterranean climate and the harsh terrestrial climate of eastern Anatolia intersect, with its plant diversity, richness, and with its fauna consisting of different living things nourished by diversity, since the first stages of history has been a paradise for humanity through its endless blessings, we see how generous the Creator has been in the process of creation here, with its endless fields painted with gold and yellow, and growing in these fields the wheat, corn, chickpeas, lentils, tobacco, grapes, pomegranates, and its rich variety, bringing smiles to the faces of the locals, is exported to all corners of the world. The moths from the MEV, Abbasid, Seltruk and Ottoman times add a layer of fascination to the province. Among the important houses of worship are Ulu Jami, a mosque from the Seltruk period, Kab Jami, the only example left in the world of the Baghdadi school of architecture, and the Musala Mosque, the first Turkish mosque built in Anatolia. The Prophet Uzeyir's tomb and Safvan bin Muattal's, which is one of the two tombs in Turkey where the place of burial is known for certain, welcome guests here. The Purple Petrus and Purple Paulus churches, with their spiritual and fascinating structures, are standing strong. In the Adayaman Museum, there are more than 30,000 works, ranging in age from Paleolithic times until today. The museum consists of a rich collection of unique works that will change many of the historical perspectives in archaeological literature. In this way, the museum attracts the attention of many local and foreign academicians and becomes host to new research. The Oturakcha Bazaar features almost exclusively locally produced goods and still retains its original texture. It is definitely one of the must-see sites of the town. The Yeni Kale Fortress of the Komageni period in the Kata region and the Gergar Fortress in the Gergar region, one of the oldest human settlements, stands in one piece on a rock, constructed in an architectural style that impresses those who see it. The Gergar Fortress 
Inside has a mosque, a bazaar, cistern, cellar, palace, dungeon, secret waterway, and other social facilities. These structures that have been able to survive until today and enchant the city leave visitors in surprise at their splendor. Other than its natural beauty and historic texture, Adiyaman is a water city. The lakes, streams, and rivers contribute to the province's beautiful nature. These clean resources, while giving life to the soil and many living things, also are a heavenly garden to look at. The dance of the birds in the Gulbasha Inekli and Azapla lakes located to the west of the province and a rare wonder of nature, the floating islands in Chali Khan, is like an extension of this heaven. Other Yaman has potential in alternative medicine, which has become increasingly popular in recent years. Gerger Suluklu Lake, along with its natural beauty, helps cure skin diseases such as eczema and psoriasis. The source waters of Adiyaman are as lively as its rivers and lakes. The water that comes out of the slopes of the mountains is a sign of the fertility of the province. Adiyaman Hos Nemrut, the eighth wonder of the ancient world, as well as the sixth wonder of the modern world, the Atatürk Dam. The country's largest dam and the largest freshwater reserve are located here. The Atatürk Dam, wrapping the province from its southern walls and spreading throughout the valleys, has created a water paradise. Over 30 different species of fish are living in the lake waters. With these features, Adiyaman soil has become a source of fertility and beauty since the first stages of history. This is why its fertile lands become a center of attraction and a home for many civilizations throughout history. The Euphrates. Here is the river Euphrates, the legendary Euphrates, the heavenly stream Euphrates. Giver and taker of life, the Euphrates. For centuries, the Euphrates has flowed past with its power and magnificence. The Euphrates is Turkey's most fertile and highest water potential river. For hundreds of years, the Euphrates has flown with all of its majesty, liveliness and wisdom. It has witnessed centuries and history, made many rivers envious. A river mentioned in holy books, its supply coming from heaven. Bringing suffrage along with fertility, causing cries in its depths, this was the water of life for civilizations. For its sake, many songs have been sung, poems written, and laments burnt. With its grandeur, it has blocked passages, at times taken lives, at times given life to those who have died. At times it has brought smiles to faces, and at times has added tears to its larger water. The Euphrates swallowed not a day-old fresh bride along with laments. One of the five large cities of the Kingdom of the Komagene, known today as Pirin, is the ancient city of Pere. Pere, in the ancient times, was on the route of the road between Melitine, or Malatya, and Samosata, mentioned for the taste of its waters in ancient Roman sources, as a place where passengers and caravans were accommodated. 
It preserved its importance in the Roman period. It was also important for its religious role in the sending of a representative to the Nicene Council located in Iznik or Nicaea in the Byzantine period. At the entrance of the town in the necropolis area, the structural function of the tombs carved out of rocks was discovered through excavations. Also, with the wine and oil presses, water cisterns, and water distribution systems that purify water, Pere is a fascinating ancient city. Mosaic ruins, temples, stone quarries, the architectural style of that period, using advanced technical skills to use the most advanced technology, astonish visitors. The most striking thing is to see how the little people of Komagene accomplished great things, which can clearly be seen here. Here, where civilizations were born, developed, and spread to the rest of the world. At every step, you can come across natural or historical structures. To name but a few, there is the Sofras Memorial Tombs, the Herun Sanctuary, and the Karakush Tumulus. The Sofras Monumental Tombs, known as the Large and Small Tumulus, are in two separate locations. Inside of them, there are vaulted tomb rooms and sarcophagi made out of stone. The rock tombs you will come across in river basins along the Turush and Pere show how the culture of burial has been a form of art in these regions. History is written in every inch of Adiyaman soil. The sanctuary of Heru in the Sinjik region. Sinjik is another mystery. In the sacred temple, the Temenos walls and two symmetrical vaulted heruns can be seen. The Karakush tumulus was made by the second Komageni king, Mithridates, for his mother, Isas. The locals, because of the eagle imagery on its columns, called it the Blackbird tumulus. On the columns, there is the figure of a lion and a handshake. Isas' daughter Antiochus and her daughter Akka lie over there. Arsimea is the summer governing center of the Komageni Kingdom. It is built upon the foot of Mount Nemrut, behind the old Kata fortress. On the ceremonial road to the south, relief statues of the kings of the Komageni and of Apollon Mithras. And in the middle section, there is a relief of the handshake of King Antiochus of Komageni with Heracles. Antiochus wanted to be remembered for being on good terms with Rome. In order to display his power and immortality, he had many structures and reliefs built throughout his kingdom. One of these reliefs is this work showing him in amicable terms with the Romans. Arsimea as a place where east meets west, the sky and the earth reconcile, gives a serious message of peace to today's people. Perhaps as a result of this, Adu Yaman remains one of the calmest cities in the world, even though it consists of different religions, languages, sects, and beliefs. Gendere Bridge is on the ancient Chabinas Creek flowing into the Gendere Canyon, located between Kata and Sinjik regions. With its 1,800-year history, the still-functioning bridge was built by the 16th Legion that set up headquarters in Samsat during the reign of the Roman Emperor Septimus Severus. Inscriptions from the period, along with shedding light on how the bridge was built, also provide valuable information on the history of the period. Among the columns along the bridge are found one dedicated to Emperor Septimus Severus, one to his wife, Julia Domina, and the others to his sons, Caracalla and Geta. Caracalla who came into power after Septimus Severus murdered his brother Geta during the struggle for the throne, 
and had all structures made in the name of his brother destroyed. From this destruction, the Gendere Bridge also gets its share, and the column built for Geta has been removed. A magnificent example of Roman monumental architecture, the Gendere Bridge today hosts visitors with its historical beauty and is a location that the locals use for entertainment and trips. <laughs> The Mountain of the Gods Hiding itself with all its mystery for 2,000 years Enormous statues fighting against time The most mysterious ancient world of the gods A king who aimed for immortality and divinity A place where unique gods met the celestial throne of the gods, Nimrut. The history of Adayaman extends back 40,000 years from the time of Christ. It became home to many civilizations, the Hittites, the Hurrians, the Phrygians, Assyrians, Persians, Macedonians, and the Komageni. The Komageni succeeded in displaying their kingdom for 230 years at a time of great power rivalry and vicious wars. Thanks to King Antiochus, who became immortal and wrote his name in history, with his ego and intelligence, Antiochus aimed to be immortal and divine. He was of Persian and Macedonian descent. The kingdom of the Komageni was also located in an important location, a passage for the Persians to the west and east for the Romans. He had to protect his land, and so, by marrying his daughter Laodica off to the Persian prince Orades II, he became allies with Persia. In this way, he had the power to stand up against Rome. He rose to fame by defeating Rome, the king of a small country, against the superpower of the time. King Antiochus, who succeeded in maintaining his status and land, had only one goal left, to become immortal. He had to do something that would assure that he would not be forgotten and that for centuries thereafter, his name and power would be talked about. He had to do something, but his main fear was that his dream would not be permanent. And King Antiochus used his self-confidence and diplomacy to build a statue of himself and all the gods on the 2,206 meter high Mount Nimrud. He chose Nemrut because Nemrut was the peak of the area and it was the best place to watch the sunrise as well as the sunset. His goal here was to synthesize the gods of the East and the West to create a new religion, a new system of faith. That's why all the gods here have two names. One of their names is in Persian, and the other in Macedonian. Zeus Aramastes, Apollon Mitras, Komagene Fortuna Taike, Heracles Artagnes. The protective eagle of the Komagene kingdom, which represents domination of the sky. The protective lion statue, which represents the kingdom's domination of the earth, were made along with Antiochus's own statue. In this way, Eastern and Western civilizations wouldn't be able to destroy a temple that had their own gods. It was a very clever idea and could have made him reach his goal. In reality, his greatest fear was to disappear and be destroyed. 
This feeling was expressed clearly in the inscriptions left behind the pedestals of the statues. Whoever protects these statues and our memory through my prayers will have the blessing of all the gods and my ancestors. Whoever harms these statues will be cursed by all the gods, and all his family who dirty the soil will burn in angry fire. As much as the statues and engravings here, the tumulus made out of millions of tons of limestone are fascinating. It was in the middle of the eastern and western terrace, and it prevailed over all the land. 140 meters in diameter and 55 meters tall, it is the highest tumulus in the world. The same statues that are on the western terrace, where the sunrise is watched best, are also featured on the eastern terrace, where the sunset is best watched. Behind the thrones is King Antiochus' 223 line will. It is Nomos, one of the most important findings in Nemrut, which is the Lion Horoscope. The Lion Horoscope is the world's oldest horoscope. The date of July 7th, 62 BC is read on the engravings of the moon and stars. This date corresponds to the date in which King Antiochus first came onto his throne. To the north and south of the terrace, there are engravings of the Komageni Kingdom's Persian kings. King Antiochus is thought to be buried in a chamber beneath the tumulus. If this room is found, it will be the first intact tomb from the Hellenistic period to be discovered. But to this day, no one has been able to find it. Since the day it was discovered, Mount Nemrut has attracted world-famous archaeologists such as Teresa Göhl, Pushtain, Sester, Karl Dörner, and Osman Hamdi Bey. The archaeologists who were fascinated with the unique works here have worked for years to try to get inside the tumulus and unfold its mystery, but all have failed. Teresa Göhl was so amazed by Nemrut that in her will she asked for her ashes to be spread across Mount Nemrut. Antiochus, in his will, wanted his statues to be visited and preserved. Even though his sons and grandchildren didn't fulfill his will, Antiochus reached his goal many years later. Mount Nemrut was made a World Heritage Site on the 11th of December, 1987. In 2004, Nemrut was awarded the Golden Apple, the Oscar of Tourism, by FIJET, the World Federation of Travel Journalists and Writers. Even though Antiochus left his mysterious world into unknown secrets, his dream became reality 2,000 years later. The whole world now knows of him and his kingdom. And to watch the sunrise and sunset, to see his mysterious world, they visit Mount Nemrut. We come from Uzbekistan. We are from Poland. In the United States. We come from England. I'm from Estonia. I'm from Taiwan. This is einfach absolute klasse, absolute fantastic here. For King Antiochus, the sun had risen once again, 2,000 years later. King Antiochus succeeded in becoming immortal.